Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. Uh, we're continuing our series on the Abana National Curriculum. We are doing section 1.5, which is a forged staple out of a uh, 5 16 inch round stock. And we need to make sure it's got an 11 8 inch interior diameter. There's a couple ways that we could do that. One is we could measure an 11 18 inch uh, wide section of our anvil here and wrap it around that. But this is the Obama National Curriculum and we're building to some stuff. So it's important to understand the math that goes into this so that as we get on into more advanced things like the gate latch and eventually some grills, we're able to calculate the amount of material that we need. So let's talk a little bit about how we calculate, even though we're told we need to use seven inches, um, how much of the material from that seven inches is gonna go into the bin. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got going on um, with the math here, right? We've got our staple that looks roughly like this. We know that we want an internal diameter of 11 eighths and our steel itself is 5 16 In order to figure out how much steel is gonna be used in this curve, we're gonna to need to turn to our old friend two pi r or the circumference of a circle. This would give us a circumference of a complete circle. We're only interested in half for a staple, so we don't need that term two. We actually just need pi r. For our purposes, we're gonna call pi three. In order to calculate the radius, which is half of our diameter, we need to actually look for the midpoint of the bar as it goes across. That is where um, the center of the material is and where we need to do our calculations from. So we can take this 11 eighths, we're gonna make that into 22 sixteenths and then take half of it, which gives us 11 sixteenths. Half of our material is 2.5 sixteenths. Add those together, we're gonna to get 13.5 sixteenths. So we'll come here, 13.5 sixteenths. Uh, multiply that together, that gives us 40.5 sixteenths. Let's erase that math right there. Uh, and when we reduce this 40.5 sixteenths, this is gonna come out to roughly uh, 10 over four, um, which is right 2.5 inches. So our bend here is going to take up 2.5 inches of stock. That means out of the seven inches we have left, each of these is going to be roughly uh, two and an eighth inches long. So that was a lot of math um, in order to understand what's going on. Uh, again, because this is the Bonner National Curriculum, we're gonna wanna be able to do calculations for exactly how much material we're gonna use on things like the hook or some of the grills and stuff like that that come later in this. So starting to practice these math skills uh, is important. Um, if you wanna be a good, accurate blacksmith, unfortunately there is some math involved in it. Let's go cut that steel and get the fire going and we'll knock these staples out. So with all that math, it does kind of go out the window if uh, you can't measure and cut things straight, but close enough for what we're doing. For the first one of these, I think we're just gonna do a nice little square taper. Keep it nice and short. That looks pretty good.
We're gonna mark the midpoint on this one so we know where to start our bend. So we figured I had all the math earlier. I'm gonna take a pair of calipers though uh, that are set for 11 8 put those on my horn. And that tells me I wanna do my bend right around there. We've got the steel marked, so um, we're gonna wrap the midpoint around that. I know my bend starts about two and a quarter inches from the end. So we're gonna hang that a fair bit over as we start wrapping it around. Take a quick look. It's so a reasonably even. Check it against our calipers. We can bring that in a little bit here. That's looking pretty close right there. Pretty happy with how even those came out. Spread those tips a little bit so it's nice and straight. And there is the first of our um, staples. Let's go ahead and make the chisel point staple next. For a chisel point, we're gonna come in, knock the corners in a little bit, or one side in, and then take that down. We wanna make sure that we're staying the same width when we end up. Dropping it is not strictly necessary, but I find it a challenge to do it without. So, there we go, one chisel point. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Bring those in. Take our chisel. That looks pretty good right there. Keep it all nice and even. And let's heat this up and uh, bend it around. Knock it around here. Looking pretty good on that internal diameter. Um, yeah, we're maybe a little further off than I would like on this. Um, and this is where, if I had made my marks at the end of where this curve is going to be based off that math, I could have set that on the horn of the anvil and then bent it around and had these line up a little bit more evenly. Um, we'll try and fix this a little bit um, and see if we can just straighten that out just a little bit here. What I'm gonna do is quench the ends there. Find my hammer and then hammer that, which is gonna close up our eye too much, but I can then bring that here and hammer right around our mark, which is gonna open it back up. We have a little bit too much curve there. little wide now so we need to look at where we've got too much bend which is right in this area and let's uh, close that up one of the problems that you can run into is starting to chase all the different bends. So looking at this staple now, this side looks really good. I'm actually over bent right here, which is causing me to go down a little bit. Um, so let's straighten that out and then close up a little bit more of that bend. Grab this with another pair of tongs. 
straighten that. And this bend right here, need to be a little bit, a little bit closer. It's looking pretty good. Let's see how that compares. That is looking spot on. And they're, uh, you know, closer to even on the length. Um, an important thing, right, and you guys just saw me do it, as you're trying to straighten something out and bends start going weird on you, um, take a moment and try and understand where that bend has really gone wrong, right? So things were overly closed, but the problem wasn't really down here um, at the base, right? When, uh, when these were too close together, the reason they were too close together was because I had too much bend back here. And so in order to fix the closeness, it wasn't just spreading them apart, but it was fixing this curve. So it's important to kind of look at the whole piece um, when something is not as neat as you would like it to be and really think about where the problem is starting so that you can go in there and uh, correct it. If all I'd done was spread that out, then I would have had a real wobble uh, on the backside rather than a nice, even, smooth curve. So those are the two staples for uh, Abana 1.5. Five. Um, 1.6 is coming up next, which is making S hooks, which are always fun. Hopefully this was uh, informational. I know it's like we're making a staple that's not super exciting, but you can see if you take this stuff seriously and you're looking at all the different skills that go into it, how you can do the math, how you can do the measurements, how you can understand when something's gone wrong, where the problem actually is. Even a project as simple as a staple um, it's got a lot to teach you. And as you go through the Bonnet curriculum, uh, certainly what I'm doing is I'm spending my time and I'm making sure that I'm trying to get through all of the skill and really understand what's going on with these rather than just knock out a couple staples, um, you know, make 10 of them and take the two that look the best and say, hey, here you go. So again, hopefully uh, interesting if you're really serious about blacksmithing. Um, I do find it fascinating stuff and I appreciate you joining me for the journey. See you again soon.